uh, going in. See you on the other side. Is he man or beast? still really cold outside uh, I really liked it very much a slow burn like watching a long stick of dynamite slowly have its fuse wind down and then eventually explode highlights for me include Kate Blanchett and Bradley Cooper as well as the couple on the escalator for the movie who are in front of me and aggressively making out the entire ride up okay just got back to my apartment from seeing Nightmare Alley what did I think did I like it for sure, easily, definitely. Even though I paid $20 for a ticket and a couple made out in front of me on the escalator on the way up to the theater, I think Del Toro had a great interpretation of Nightmare Alley and practically every single actor in this movie made a meal of their role in the best way possible. Bradley Cooper ate, Kate Blanchett ate, Rooney Mara ate, Willem Dafoe was feasting, Tony Collette ate, David Strathairn ate, Ron Perlman was also there, and even that guy from Mindhunter ate. Overall, great movie and solid watch. And I would absolutely rewatch the movie. Parts of it were gorgeous. The way the lighting is used, almost always motivated under the yellow bulbs of the carnival or the harsh neon of the city, and it makes the world feel alive. The lighting comes together with the shot selection to make a few incredibly gorgeous scenes and plenty of shots throughout the movie that are worth a screen grab for a wallpaper. That alone is enough for me, honestly, but watching this psychological noir, knowing how it ends, would be a totally different experience for me for watching it a second time. The themes of hubris, self-denial, and inevitability all make for a super entertaining ride, but it can be made even better with a revisit someday. Nightmare Alley was a movie that successfully made me think and it made me feel something which is not incredibly common with recent movies that I've seen. I feel like a lot of my most satisfying watches have had this quality to them, and like I said, the themes were really well done. If somewhat direct in the movie, uh, they were still there and executed properly. It's much more the makings of a classic Shakespearean tragedy than anything else in terms of plot. And watching this tragedy unfold on the protagonist, Stan, because of the choices he makes, was done really, really well. And we're getting into spoiler territory here, but Bradley Cooper's portrayal of Stan, the main character, was excellent. At the beginning of the movie, it feels like ages before he even gets a line in, but you can really understand him before that even happens. What kind of person he is, how he views others, and what he might be thinking, you can all sort of get a sense for very early on. And this journey from distrust of a mysterious man to wanting to see this man lift up everyone around him at the carnival, and eventually to watching him tie the knot of his own noose is just really well executed. It's one where he gets where he wants, but not what he needs, and it's a very bitter conclusion. The score accents these more vulnerable moments throughout the film in a minimalist way that just really, really worked for me. And you feel a sense of inevitability as Stan's impending doom inches closer with each passing minute and then a sort of disgusting kind of relief when it all falls down on him. Watching someone inflate their ego till the point of bursting as everyone around them begs them to stop is quite an experience. You feel bad, but you're just kind of waiting for it to get through it already. Though the way to get there is well worth it for everything you get along the way. As mentioned, I really love the cinematography and the lighting in this one. Actors and actresses across the board killed their roles. They committed fully to the bit in the best way possible, as they should, and it never felt overdone. Characters were over the top, but never too campy, and it always felt right at home with the environment that was created. The set design in particular was fantastic in my mind, specifically the carnival and the office of Kate Blanchett's character, Dr. Ritter. Both are standouts in my mind and I can see them clear as day even now. The lighting does this beautiful mix of blues and yellows from the natural and artificial light, which work really, really well throughout the movie. You can see it at the carnival, you can see it uh, in Kate Blanchett's office, you can see it in almost every sort of environment and it just is a very nice contrast that's a nice clear line through the film. One standout moment to me in particular was a scene early in the movie at the carnival where there's essentially a cheap haunted house type ride. This is the closest we ever get to any sort of Lovecraft type of stuff or horror, but it's really a great scene. 
Stan, ordered by Willem Dafoe's character, who runs the circus, goes by Clem. They're hunting out an escaped freak from uh, the carnival that they run. It's actually an incredibly tense moment within this haunted house, and one where I feel like everything is just tied together perfectly and just flows, and every aspect of the movie is firing on all cylinders. It was right here where I knew I was really going to enjoy the ride of a movie, not the carnival ride, but the movie. Cannot emphasize that enough. The carnival ride looked incredibly scary. Another performance that I think is the heart of the movie is actually that of David Strathairn. He plays a washed up mentalist at the carnival. Uh, his name is Pete in the movie, and he's married to Tony Collette's character, who goes by Xena. They're sort of a mentalist psychic duo. And Pete takes Stan under his wing and he shows him the ropes, gives him insight, and sort of forebodes as Stan's many potential flaws come to light during his time at the carnival. He also sort of warns Stan about the potential dangers of mentalism and starting to believe your own act. Obviously, it's going to fall on deaf ears, but the parallels between Pete and Stan are done incredibly well. And it really makes you sympathize with Pete and just want to hug him like he's some sort of sad and neglected grandpa of someone's. He functions as a sort of mirror to Stan, and he's not alone in this role, as a lot of the different aspects of Stan are pushed and mirrored through the other carnies that emulate parts of his character in some of the best ways and in some of the worst ways. Glem, for example, is essentially a version of Stan who doesn't wear a mask. He doesn't deny who he really is inside. And spoiler warning for the next 40 seconds or so, but Clem calls Stan out on his faux niceties, uh, his meaningless gestures, and his lack of conviction to the ethics he seems to espouse. Stan, for example, would often give worthless tokens of kindness to the carnival's quite literal captive, Freak, uh, just a man who had been put in a cage on account of Clem. While Clem, on the other hand, keeps the man caged and abused, treating him like an animal. Despite their different treatment to this man on the surface, Stan is still eager to learn how to control this captive person, how to drug them up and create an addict through manipulation and deception the same way that Clem did. These are just a few in a long line of the hints that we are given to foreshadow Stan's unraveling and eventual revelation of himself to the audience and his own self as he is his own biggest denier and supporter. Yet another opposing force to Stan is Kate Blanchett's Dr. Ritter, a psychologist who finds herself aligned with Stan the Mentalist, her world of science leads his abilities to manipulate to another level entirely. He really begins to rely on her and exploit this, but she is calculating precise and at times very terrifying in a cool way. She's one of the few characters in the movie that can get you legitimately concerned for what's going to happen to Stan next. And Dr. Ritter represents the next level for Stan beyond the carnival and his first attempt to play in a new crowd, so to speak. And in many ways, she is his equal. With all my praise being sung, I do have a few issues with the movie. My main complaint being that things slow down considerably in Act 2 once the carnival takes a bat seat to the plot. The middle 40% is nowhere near bad by any stretch of the imagination. Still incredibly enjoyable, though the opening act and closing 30 minutes are just so great and satisfying that the middle struggles to keep up with the quality, in my opinion. Scenes themselves here work very well. They just seem to lack as much punch or magic that the rest of the movie has. Of course, I would say everything we see is necessary in this middle portion, but it does feel to drag out a touch here or there. Another thing, though this is super nitpicky on my end, is that I really didn't know too much about the movie going in, but I was expecting almost entirely carnival type setting and things to play out in a much more horror, gory type uh, Lovecraft sort of way and not so much a psychological noir. Though I am incredibly pleased with what I got, I can't help but wonder what might have been. So in all, this is hardly a complaint here and not really fair criticism, but I figured I'd bring it up in case anyone was wondering the same. That said, I suppose I would have made more take place within the realm of the carnival if I had my way. I think this could have potentially helped the movie in some ways as we get to see more of Clem, Willem Dafoe, and that's always a treat. And I feel like the beginning of the post-carnival scenes could still happen at the carnival, where Stan is rising to acclaim as a mentalist before his inevitable fall, and this would allow for more of Stan's fellow carnies to try to reason with him and bring him back down to earth and try to see the error of his ways. Of course, it would be in vain, but it would just create more of a slow drift away from the carnival and ease us into a new environment rather than an abrupt jump from one world to another. I think it would have felt more natural and helped the pacing in the middle of the movie, while also giving a ton of brilliant actors who had roles as carnies more material to work with. 
Though it is a really solid entry overall, there are several scenes and relationships where Nightmare Alley really stands out from itself. The scene in the haunted house that I mentioned earlier completely stand out, as was Pete's relationship with Stan in the earlier portion of the film. This is, again, a serious spoiler, so once again, maybe skip ahead like a minute, but the ending was one of the most satisfying endings I've seen in a long time. You know it's going to blow up in Stan's face, but it's the how of it all that makes it just work so well. Again, stop here if you haven't seen it yet. Seriously, just skip ahead 45 seconds. Stan eventually finds himself alone in ruin and derelict after he caused it all to collapse on himself due to his huge ego and thinking of himself a god, something Pete brilliantly warned him of in the beginning of it all. And he finds a carnival, perhaps the same carnival he left, where he hopes to beg Clem for a job, anything he could get his hands on. The very same Clem who he worked alongside to recapture a human being just so that they could call him a freak and make some money off of him. But no, when he walks into the main office of this carnival, it's just another ringleader who finds Stan and considers him just another drunken bum. And as this formerly acclaimed mentalist begs for work, offering anything he can to this ringleader, he gets denied and we get to watch it all unfold. We watch as he's tricked and manipulated into becoming the exact same kind of freak that he helped enslave earlier in the film. And to me, that was incredibly well done, and it ended the movie in a perfectly satisfying note. That said, I do have one question. If I could ask one question about this movie. It is, why did the couple in front of me on the escalator not see me? I was maybe five stairs behind you. Surely the kissing was not so intense that you didn't see that I was there. Like, come on please. So yeah, overall, a solid four out of five. See this movie if you might at all be interested. I would say it's well worth it. It's a good time, it's a good movie, and it's money well spent. Please give it a chance because I, for one, would love to see more movies like this in theaters and doing well at the box office. So peace out until next time.